uh, today I'm going to um, give you uh, more examples of uh, the work or uh, from uh, sort of study uh, that I have done in the past. Uh, oh, so first of all, uh, I am uh, I am Kim Ti. I go by Maggie. Uh, I was enrolled in biostats program uh, in 2012 and graduated in 2015. Um, so I'm glad, very glad to be here to share uh, my experience and stories with you. Uh, so I hope through my talk I can uh, help you at some level um, when you are planning your study and career. Uh, and also get prepared um, when you are um, entering the job market. Um, so today uh, I'm going to talk um, some projects that I have done for work and uh, course projects and also uh, some job application experience. And uh, at the end of the talk, uh, I will answer questions. Uh, I will answer questions with Kim and together. Um, so uh, currently, I'm working in um, management consulting slash fintech company. Uh, so we provide uh, financial uh, analytics uh, advisory services uh, and uh, technical solutions to our clients, uh, most of which are finance institutes. Um, so our major business uh, can be seen as two parts, advisory and the solutions. Uh, I am with the engineering de uh, department uh, under the solutions division. Um, in the past several months, uh, I've been working on uh, data engineering um, products on the cluster. So uh, it is uh, um, it, it, it allows users to generate data sets um, for downstream analysis. Um, and the users are uh, most of which are uh, like statisticians, uh, data scientists, business analysts, and also associates. So for people, it's really for people who are light techie. Um, and uh, this tool allows users to um, define uh, metric generating functions and uh, generate data sets and uh, um, uh, set very specific um, requirements for the table layout uh, for the data that you're asking for. Uh, for uh, those requirements can be uh, filters or uh, sampling strategies uh, and also table layout. Um, and uh, this tool consumes structured data sets on the cluster um, and uh, it, it, this tool is pretty much like a factory uh, to produce a data set. It consumes structured data sets as uh, raw materials, right? And then uh, it assembles um, uh, and it assembles these materials uh, into the data set, uh, which can be loaded and which can be later registered with uh, tools that you are most familiar with, such as some BI tools. Um, like Tableau or Jasper, um, <coughs> or uh, Impala table on the cluster. So uh, in the front end, you will see uh, data listed in columns rather than um, sitting on the cluster in uh, some format you are not familiar with. Um, so during the development, um, I was uh, helping the de uh, software developers to write function uh, to define those uh, metrics, which are called generators here. Um, and uh, those generators pr uh, provide signals uh, or calculate signals, which are uh, later be used in modeling um, stage. For example, uh, if someone is interested in uh, the balance weighted um, relative uh, interest rate uh, for all accounts, um, given a specific account category uh, on a monthly basis, or if they want to uh, calculate, or if they want to find the geo, uh, geographic location associated with the account, which has the maximum balance um, in any given month uh, for each customer, uh, this tool will allow you to do that without coding. 
um, because um, there is a, a wizard uh, working as a helper for uh, uh, so that you can drag and drop these objects uh, and build a function on these objects, uh, which uh, finally turns out into your data set. Um, and uh, at the meantime, I also uh, write features. I also implement features in Scala, calculate column stats, uh, such as um, mean variance, skewness, kurtosis, uh, and uh, death styles, IQR, to, um, uh, for, uh, to facilitate uh, exploratory data analysis um, before you start modeling. Um, so, uh, and uh, in addition, metadata are also uh, added to each data set that we create. For example, um, counts of uh, active checking uh, for each month uh, or uh, counts of uh, different types of transactions happen in every month. Um, and uh, at the meantime, working as a data scientist, I work with uh, software developers and a UI designer. Uh, uh, I, uh, myself, I'm a user of, of to use this tool as well. So um, I give uh, user uh, experience feedback to UI designer and help them to improve the product design um, and uh, make sure there is no mistake in, uh, in the logic. Um, so uh, this is a project that I have done when I uh, first joined the company. Um, so our client uh, was the big bank, and their retail banking uh, has uh, was facing some problems to um, to keep the customer uh, for long term with a uh, low interest rate, uh, and they have spent a lot of money um, on it, but they with very little effect. Um, so uh, in the first stage of analysis, we want to, uh, we want to know our customers. And uh, we, uh, so we try to segment our customers into different categories so that we can design different products towards each category of the customer. Um, As you can see, the segmentation uh, was done um, by scoring each customer in a three-dimensional way. Um, the dimension was derived by uh, business analysts from advisory side um, who has more expertise um, in the business. And then statisticians build a model for each dimension. And then we score customers um, using these three models. Um, and finally, uh, for um, finally, we create some buckets to uh, categorize uh, these customers, um, and uh, we uh, so that we would be able to target uh, customers that uh, which looks more uh, attractive to the bank to reach out or uh, pay a higher rate. Um, so um, the way uh, we did that. Is, is um, largely based on team cooperation. As I said, the model was built by statisticians, but the data prepared, uh, the data was prepared by data scientists who was also, uh, who is also the developer of the Metriscape, um, the data engineering tool. Um, so, um, and uh, at each run of the modeling process, um, I, uh, I help to develop the model performance evaluation framework uh, for both them, uh, for uh, for data which are used to um, build the model and also on the entire data set. The sample that we use to build the model is just two percent of the entire data set, um, and uh, these were all put into a framework which can be run on the cluster. Um, so uh, 
before I joined my current company, I was uh, working in a uh, hospital. Uh, that was my first job. Uh, the hospital is a very big organization. It differs a lot from uh, a small company. Um, so, um, New York Presbyterian uh, is a teaching hospital associated with Cornell Math School and uh, Columbia Math School. Um, so New York Hospital uh, was the teaching hospital associated with Cornell, and the Presbyterian Hospital was with Columbia. And then they, uh, these two hospitals came to merge in uh, 1998. And then after that, this hospital um, kept buying hospital around the city area. Um, so till today, it, it is a very big organization. Um, and uh, what I was doing there uh, is, of, uh, is also something about ranking, but the object has changed. This time, we were ranking uh, patients by their readmission rate. Um, so readmission rate is a big thing for every hospital because it's an it, it, it is an important quality measure, um, not just because it affects the ranking of the hospital, um, but also a uh, center of uh, Medicare and Medicaid services um, decide whether to penalize a hospital um, depending on the hospital's readmission rate comparing to um, its peers and also uh, against benchmark uh, and also comparing to its previous historical performance. Um, so the uh, hospital has put a lot of effort um, on the readmission rate control. So, um, and they have been cooperated with uh, bioinformatics uh, department uh, at Columbia and some researchers at Microsoft. Uh, so specifically, uh, they were looking to uh, predict the probability that inpatient uh, being readmitted um, after discharge, uh, within 30 days after being discharged. Um, and uh, in 2014, a paper was published by uh, Columbia University, two professors at Columbia University, uh, in which they um, found that stratified on a different readmission diagnosis um, can result in a better model performance comparing to directly modeling on the all-cause readmission. Um, so they uh, designed 14 um, readmission groups, and uh, so they built 14 models on every one of them. Uh, here is a chart of the model performance on their data set. As you can see, uh, the all-cost readmission model has an ROC just 0 0.68, um, but some of the models stratified on the very specific um, readmission diagnosis can have uh, 0 0.92 uh, or uh, 0 0.88 uh, area under ROC curve. Uh, so that's very promising um, result. And uh, so the hospital decided to implement the model uh, in the hospital environment. Um, that seems pretty straightforward to do, but actually um, it takes a lot of effort starting uh, from the raw data. Um, so um, um, because the data is completely different, uh, Columbia's data was based on Columbia's data set and uh, uh, the model was trained from data uh, the, the model was trained on data from 2005 to 2008 and tested on 2009, but uh, as the big hospital, NYP has uh, six hospital data available, and the time range is much wider um, to very recent. Uh, so we have more data available, and they were, uh, some of them are in SQL database, and some of them are uh, stored in Hadoop. So um, 
to start with, uh, we need to know what kind of features were uh, included in the model. Um, so we will take the CHF model as an example. Um, the four major groups of features are patient demographics, um, lab results, uh, previous diagnosis, and also um, history visit. Um, and then uh, there are a lot of uh, data processing and data engineering was done in SQL. Um, so uh, for demographics and lab results, these two parts of data are most tricky because um, as the hospital were using different coding systems at different sites, and uh, different sites can change their coding system along the years. So there were a lot of uh, data integrity and the data quality needs to be done before we um, start to think about the modeling um, next. So first of all, um, uh, all the data pre-processing and table joining, uh, data capturing was done in SQL, and then uh, the data was grouped out from SQL database uh, to Hadoop, uh, save as HDFS, and uh, then there were some uh, data engineering steps involved um, in this process. Uh, so for um, prior diagnosis and uh, uh, historical visits, I uh, designed two MapReduce job to calculate um, the, uh, the corresponding features to each feature group. Um, for example, whether the patient has been uh, admitted as inpatient in the past three months, in the past six months, and in the past year. And also uh, we count um, whether, uh, uh, and also we build uh, binary features to indicate whether the patient has ever been diagnosed with uh, diabetes, for example. Uh, these are um, diagnosis features. And lab results, uh, all the units were, um, uh, unified as well. Um, so uh, once you uh, finish up all those data pre-processing, data engineering steps, uh, you uh, have the feature matrix merged, um, and then you can start it, uh, another step of data pre-processing. You partition the data in training and testing. And uh, for training, you uh, cross-validate the model um, and pick the one with the best performance and you validate and you evaluate the model performance on the whole offset, and um, finally you got the performance. And all this modeling was done in R. Um, so that was a workflow for model development. Uh, at the very end of um, this process, you will have coefficient file associated with the CHF model. Uh, so what's now, once you have the coefficient file, uh, you have to uh, deploy it in the production environment. In the production workflow, um, remember the raw data was still uh, sits on a SQL database. And the first thing is to scoop them out onto HDFS um, and uh, design the four MapReduce jobs to calculate each group of feature and then uh, that corresponds to the transformation step. And then um, there is another MapReduce job to merge these four different sets of features um, into a big feature matrix. And then you can apply the coefficient file to the feature matrix with another MapReduce job. Um, and uh, all these steps can be put into Uzi workflow, which is a job scheduling tool for uh, the big data platform so that you can set the time, uh, uh, tell Uzi when you want to run this workflow to get a final result. And um, the final result can be implemented um, either uh, in Tableau as a report, uh, or you can have a website set up for the score uh, separately. But when I left, they haven't decided how to show the score to the user yet. Uh, the user would be nurses and physicians, um, and they will get a score uh, on the very first day when the patient uh, was admitted in the hospital. So
so uh, this can help them to prioritize their workflow uh, to decide which patient to uh, be taken care of first or pay more attention. Uh, so uh, next, I want to uh, talk about my background before uh, I landed my first job. Uh, so uh, as you can see, um, my experience and skill sets were uh, gradually evolved around um, after uh, my undergraduate study. I majored in bioscience uh, in my college. Um, and uh, uh, so besides those basic mathematic courses, uh, as probability linear algebra uh, and uh, probability, um, I found one course specifically interesting uh, in my last year, which is called uh, Computational Tools for uh, Biology. So, um, uh, sorry, uh, the animation seems doesn't work, but uh, these are uh, two animations for uh, the zebrafish cotton seeding generation simulation. Um, so uh, remember the course, uh, uh, I did a project uh, supervised by the course instructor afterwards, uh, which turned out to be uh, my undergraduate thesis. Uh, so basically, uh, I um, simulate uh, zebrafish cotton fin generation. Uh, the fin generation was triggered by um, uh, morphogens, three morphogens. Uh, and the joint formation was formed when these three morphogens uh, were passing um, the, the threshold. Um, so uh, at the end, uh, uh, the diffusion of the morphogens transportation between cells can be um, simulated uh, by the Fick's law, which um, describes uh, like particles um, transportation. Uh, Um, so after I graduated, um, I I think I thought I uh, I found something I was very interested in, uh, which has something to do with biology and has something to do with uh, computer programs as well. So um, I found an opportunity um, in computational gen genomics lab in uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, where I uh, learned how to use Perl and Awk and Linux shell to process um, those gene sequencing results from BLAST and NUMER. Um, for those who might have the same experience, they will know the tools maybe more familiar than I do. Uh, so the gene sequencing results were firstly um, um, processed by these scripting languages. Uh, and uh, uh, I was able to uh, visualize the data in R and uh, in a style which is very uh, similar to Circons, which is also a data visualization tool, um, which provides you um, uh, the, uh, the data project in a circular style. So the first graph is uh, the gene similarities comparison um, from the from the samples, uh, and uh, we compare the sample with the reference gene. Um, and here you can see uh, the the transparency um, was based on uh, their similarity, and uh, uh, the width of the uh, each piece of the gene represents its length. Uh, and this is a uh, gene uh, assembly result. Uh, in the middle part, uh, these are all those genes that we don't know from our sample. Um, uh, there are just two more examples for uh, uh, the functions that I realize in R, uh, which mimics circles uh, features. Uh, the first one is a bar graph, and the second one 
uh, which uh, the second one shows you the ideogram and highlight and ticks and uh, uh, you can highlight the part as you want it and you can add legend to it as well. Um, so um, after I finished the intern in uh, the genomic lab, I felt like uh, I want to learn more statistic knowledge uh, um, and some analytical skills. So I applied to uh, Brown and um, I was very lucky that I was enrolled in this program where I learned a lot of statistic knowledge and uh, made a lot of friends there. Uh, so uh, the courses that I took uh, should be very similar to most your uh, to the course that most youth uh, has already taken. Um, but uh, at the meantime, I already uh, I also took machine learning course and database, um, as some of you already asked, uh, which I found uh, were very helpful when I was finding a job. Uh, after I graduated. And uh, there is um, a project I want to talk about, which, um, which I started actually in my last semester. Uh, it's an industrial cooperative project uh, with UpToDate. The company was a healthcare informatics uh, company. They provide online medical reviews uh, to healthcare providers. Uh, so that they can look up uh, online or within their EMR workflow uh, for references when they were seeing patients. Um, and uh, the search results were originally listed um, in a way by just showing the title of topics, which are uh, titles of articles. Uh, but the company wants to uh, add a, a sub-level of titles uh, to each of the topics. Uh, according by each uh, section's relevance to the query that's entered by the user. Um, so um, I, uh, I learned an algorithm which is called Rank SVN. Uh, it basically uh, transforms the ranking problem into a binary classification problem. Um, and uh, at the meantime, during the feature engineering uh, Stage, uh, I was able to um, make the use of some uh, context information coming from the um, HL7 messages uh, from where you can get uh, information for the healthcare provider's professional role um, and uh, their uh, task context uh, and also some topics they were choosing from. Um, for uh, better mapping to uh, from the query to the section. Um, so for example, uh, if you search Red Bull, Red, uh, Red Bull yeah. uh, seems like someone's favorite drink when writing a thesis. Um, so you will be able to see um, the specific uh, sociocologic effects and uh, uh, beverage consumption, caffeine content as well, uh, listed under the um, uh, topic title uh, according to its relevance to the search itself. The search is represented not just by the text itself, but also context information around this search. Um, and uh, at the end of the project, uh, this algorithm will be able to improve uh, the section level ranking uh, by uh, four uh, four percent in terms of scandal tell uh, with uh, those context information comparing to those without context information. Um, so I uh, went through those projects. Just want to give you um, some examples of what I've done and uh, what kind of skills that I've used to do this thing. Um, for uh, what I can see, important things come from our, um, consists of three parts. The domain knowledge, which decides the problem, um, which should be the first step when you're starting a project. Um, 
and also statistic knowledge uh, starting from uh, descript descriptive statistics and uh, knowledge of readmission models uh, under which under which section you should know uh, how to deal with missing data and uh, how to do feature selection, how to rule out uh, features collinear LED. Uh, and also after you build a model, uh, you should know uh, how to do model diagnosis. Um, and the uh, testing has concluded for the day. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the modeling uh, process, you should uh, know how to evaluate model performance uh, in different terms of measurement. Um, and also uh, some machine learning algorithms. 